morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to episode one of our IBM Security Verified Governance webinar series. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the primary data elements that make up a verified governance solution. And this solution is probably like a great many other governance solutions in that the primary data elements are made up of identities, obviously, organizations, divisions, and departments, roles and permissions, provisioning targets or applications, accounts and risks. So how do these actually interact with each other? Well, let's take a look. Identities normally represent real people, but I guess they could represent other object types, belong to organizational units or groupings of other um, objects. In our world, roles and permissions can be published to those same organizational units, making the right permission available to only the right set of people. And provisioning targets, such as Active Directory and Salesforce and the like, provide low level permissions, which can be wrapped up in business roles, and also provide us with a list of accounts, many of which we will want to assign ownership to a person or an identity. And of course, those people are assigned roles and permissions either directly through automatic assignment as part of a birthright entitlement, directly via manual assignment, or inherited via discovery of the permissions that have already been assigned in the target system. Now, this picture is exceptionally simplistic. For a more detailed version of these relationships, you can take a look at our website at www.madigansolutions.com. Let's take a look at these data elements inside our system. I'm going to log on to our administration console. And I'll be presented with our standard homepage showing the various modules within the verified governance product. Um, for the purposes of this session, we're going to focus our attention on the Access Governance Core predominantly. When we select this module, we're presented with a page that lists the identities within our platform. Now, there are a number of ways of loading identity information into the system, but that is a topic for another day. For now, we're going to select a suitable identity to examine, and Boris Oliver seems like a really good candidate to me. Boris, as we can see, is an employee within the compliance department. And if we select data at the bottom of the screen, we will see a raft of attributes associated with Boris. These attributes are all custom attributes that we have already applied to the platform. And the only limitation around these attributes and the definition of the attributes is, I guess, your imagination. That said, I would suggest you only capture what you need to make informed provisioning and compliance reporting decisions. So for example, organizational structural information, start dates, end dates, job roles, and maybe manager information. If we select the groups tab, we will see the basic structure of our fictional organization. It looks rather like any standard organization, I guess. And if we drill down through this organizational structure through the legal division and the compliance department, and I select users on the right hand side, we will see our new best friend, Boris Oliver. This organizational structure, however, is just one way to group users together. The Verify Governance Platform allows for custom groupings to be constructed. And I've made a grouping already based on people's um, location. So let's select a different grouping. If I drill through the United Kingdom to London to one main street, and again, I select the users on the right hand side, I will see yet again our new best friend, Boris Oliver. Now, if you think back to the data relationship um, diagram at the beginning of this video, you will remember that entitlements are also published to these groupings. And if we look at the entitlements present at one main street, we will see 
prn-london from the Active Directory service. It has a green tick beside it too. And this tick denotes that whenever someone is added to the one Main Street group, they will be automatically assigned the prn-london entitlement. And in my fictional world, this provides all those people at one Main Street in London the ability to print documents at the London location. If we were to take a look, uh, for example, at what is going on at one Acme Boulevard in Dublin, we'll see that there is a permission in here called PRN-Dublin. What does this mean? Anyone who is uh, physically located at that location can use the printers in Dublin um, and presumably will not be able to use the printers in London. Let's take a look at roles. We can see in this system that we have hundreds of roles or entitlements. Um, some of these entitlements are business roles, some of them are low-level permissions, and some are what we call IT roles. And many are low-level permissions linked to a particular service. So let's take a look at the Active Directory permissions that allow users to print. I select Active Directory and filter on those permissions that begin with PRN. I can see here that we have five permissions that afford users this printing luxury. Three are listed in bold and italic type, which signifies that these permissions have been published and are available to users. The last two, uh, PRN-Cardiff and PRN-Belfast, they exist in Active Directory but no users are assigned and these permissions have not yet been published to any group of users. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, this guy is using too many terms interchangeably, roles and permissions, entitlements, uh, and you are probably right. It does get a little bit confusing, um, but hopefully uh, we can uh, resolve that issue by taking a look at a diagram that will help explain this. So permissions are the low level entitlements on a provisioning target like Active Directory or the Linux operating system. IT roles are a collection of permissions for a specific provisioning target. And then we have business roles, which are a collection of a combination of IT roles and permissions that span provisioning targets. And crucially, business rules can also uh, incorporate other business rules. So in the example here, our third business rule is made up of business rule one, IT rule two, and also low level permissions on the Active Directory system itself. Now, in our world, users can be assigned permissions directly. They can be assigned an IT role uh, which gives them a collection of uh, low-level permissions in one hit, or they can be assigned a business role, or they can be assigned all of those things all at the same time. Now that we know what a business role is, let's create one. We'll select the Add button here. We'll create a role called um, backup user, brackets Unix. It's of type business role, and we'll save that. Let's just do a search here and make sure that it exists. There we go, backup user Unix. And let's give it some structure. So I click on the management tab here. I'll select add and we will actually look for um, those permissions within Active Directory which provide the functionality to do backups. There we go. Unix restore, Unix backup and we've now created a business role that will provide people with the opportunity to be members of the Unix backup and the Unix restore groups. Additionally, I can publish this, 
which is a two-step process. You can see here at the minute we can't actually add an organizational unit to this because I have to click on the actions button, publish it, and that in effect makes this an active permission or entitlement within the system. And now I can allocate a particular business unit and I'm going to go for information technology division. Um, let's go for infrastructure and let's go for server administration. Now our backup user business role has been published um, and is now available for those people who exist inside the server administration team for them to request. Let's take a look at our applications now. And if we select the Active Directory application and select Application Access, we'll see yet again the full list of the low level permissions that are available on this service. And again, those which are highlighted in bold and italic type have users already attached and uh, those have been published to specific um, business units or organizational units. We can also select the Users tab to see a list of those users that have an account on this particular application. Now, identity governance is a really dry subject. I try to make it interesting, but it is quite challenging at times. Um, and it's very difficult to make these kind of presentations sparkle. But we've now arrived at the most visually stunning aspect of our video. If I select analysis, we get to see some charts and I'm hoping that the charts will actually speak for themselves. You can see here that they give you a breakdown of what kind of permissions exist, whether they have been assigned to people or not, how those assignments have been made. Visually quite stunning, at least in the context of identity governance. And finally, let's talk about uh, accounts that may exist on those applications. So again, let's pick our Active Directory service. This section here talks about um, how do you create an account? What kind of password policy should be applied during the creation process? And of course, if I select target attributes, I will get to see which attributes on that particular provisioning target should be populated and how. That was quite a lot to take in. We've covered identities, organizational structures, roles, applications and accounts. That said, we've merely scratched the surface, so to learn more about Verified Governance's data model, visit our website at www.medicansolutions.com. Thanks for watching and be sure to look out for our next episode.